Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 783 for the 16th of April. So uh, the Frontline Changes report has been out, uh, so probably 8 hours as per this time where you watch this video. Uh, so uh, so yeah, now we go to go into the strategic and tactical reporting and uh, so can't be helped. I can't put both videos at the same time or the two videos will just eat each other out and uh, it would not be good for you because you will not be able to see the video here. So uh, go on from the uh, Kherson front. Uh, so before we reach the Kherson front, there the Ukrainians have struck the Ziankoi air base. So this air base is attacked by the HIMARS 12 times uh, ATACMS, I don't know how to do ATAC, ATEMS, I don't know how to pronounce that uh, the abbreviation, uh, was fired at this airbase and apparently the airbase um, was hit. The, so the Russians did not manage to really take down these missiles. And uh, some equipments are hit, buildings was hit, so it was unclear what is uh, the exact damage uh, as per this, uh, when, I, when I mapped this uh, information. So, uh, but it doesn't really go to stop the Russian Air Force, but definitely this actually shows the power of this HIMARS uh, ATAP um, missiles, those super long range missiles. So it's a totally different kind of missile. So I guess uh, it flies differently, which is why the Russian uh, air defense are unable to intercept it. It's the same thing at the beginning uh, where HIMARS was first introduced into Ukraine, Russia actually had no means of stopping the HIMARS missiles. So it, it took some time for them to come up with the calculations for the radar and the missiles to actually intercept this missile. So, so um, the, the, the Ukrainians start to use it means that uh, they are going to um, lose this element of surprise. Uh, so they better start using it to hit some uh, useful targets before the Russians find some countermeasures to it. Uh, so that's what I think. Uh, over at the Kherson front, we still have the Ukrainian Defense Ministry talking about fighting at Krinky. Russian forces continue to be trying to attack Krinky, according to the Ukrainians. And uh, there is a lot of striking uh, around the Tyahinka and the Ivanivka region. So if we zoom in, uh, the, the Russian Defense Ministry uh, Defense Ministry reported about uh, conducting a fire attack against Ukrainian forces at Ivanivka, and we indeed have uh, Russian artillery striking. Uh, so the Krasnopol is basically, if I'm not wrong, is actually uh, guided artillery hitting uh, Ukrainian artillery in Ivanivka, and then and another. Uh, so I believe I'm not sure if this two is no, it's, it's two different things. So two different artilleries got hit in uh, Ivanivka. And then in Tiahinka, there was a, Ukraine, a Russian guided missile attack from a helicopter hitting uh, Ukrainian forces within Tiahinka. And I believe this is actually the first time in a long time that uh, you, that Russian helicopters, attack helicopters was used uh, in the Kherson front, which also means that the air defense capability of the Ukrainians in this region is uh, sorely lacking. So, um, which is why you know, they can actually use helicopters. So this is actually quite bad for the Ukrainians. Really bad news. Uh, so if we zoom out, I think there is nothing else over this area here. We move into the Zaporizhia front. Uh, over at the Zaporizhia front, this is Zaporizhia city. And now uh, this is the Zaporizhia front with the three different sectors. Uh, at the Orykiv sector, Russian forces reported that they have, sh they have shelled Orykiv, uh, similar to the reports at uh, Ivanivka. The Russian forces are also reportedly attacking towards Lohivsky in the northwest of Verbove as well as Robotini. The Ukrainian forces counterattack at Robotini trying to recapture uh, lost grounds. And as we zoom in into uh, Robotini region, there is a geolocation location of Russian forces landing troops uh, at around this area here, which means that the Russian forces has actually uh, taken more grounds uh, and confirmed that they have secured the uh, the southern half of Robotine and corroborating the loss of all these grounds in this area here. So Ukrainian forces uh, last was closest geo location was a, a, a squad of infantry walking along the road getting hit by FPV drone uh, in this area here. So I think the Ukrainian presence at Robotine is getting a bit scarce and uh, Russian forces may decide to take the entire village if they choose to. But tentatively like uh, this front line seems to be just used by the Russians as a means of a kill box. So I 
not sure if the Russians would, would really want to capture this entire area here. Uh, reports at Luhivsky is interesting coming from the Russian Defense Ministry, Lugoskoye. Uh, we will continue to monitor and see if this develops into something uh, more. But tentatively, I don't think so. Uh, so we already have sp sporadic reports uh, about fighting in this area here on the 1st, 20th and 24th of February. And uh, then there was nothing until you know, one and a half months later. So we will continue to monitor and see how this progress. So we move on. Uh, over at the Huyai Poli sector, Melanifka continue to be struck by guided missile attacks from uh, Russian helicopters. Uh, this, this particular spot is a hot spot for Russian helicopters. So Russian helicopters consist consistently attacking this area here, signifying the, the severe lack of surface to air missiles or total absence of it. This is not a very important front line, this area here at the Huyai Pule sector. So which is no surprise that there is actually no uh, air defense uh, situated in this area here because this is not somewhere where where the Russians are actually making serious push. Uh, at the Donetsk front, at the so this is the Donetsk front, uh, this area here, this is the Donetsk front. Uh, the Russian forces are attacking over at Staromayovsky, Uruzaine, uh, Voleda, uh, Novomihailivka, as well as Krasnohorivka. So this is the strategic situation around this area here. And uh, at the Staromayovsky, Uruzaine region, uh, there is no other updates other than the attacks in this area here, uh, Russian forces previously have taken back uh, the grounds that they lost back lost to the Ukrainians, but you know that's about it uh, from Staromayovsky region. Uh, there is a airstrike reported uh, in the western part of Novodonetsk, hitting Ukrainian defensive positions. Uh, and we move on uh, in the in the north northwest of uh, Voleda. Voleda is over, over here. There is a Lancet strike on Ukrainian uh, self-propelled gun south of Bohuyan. Uh, Yevlenka. So this is an artillery system getting destroyed by the Russians a Lancet, which means that the, uh, the Russians are now you know, hunting for uh, Ukrainian equipment uh, pretty far away from the front line. We are talking about a distance of 6-7 kilometers. So uh, so the Russians are now hunting for more things. They, they, don't, they run out of targets in the near, uh, near the front line it seems. And uh, over at uh, Novo Mihailivka, there is no news regarding the battle of Novo Mihailivka. I don't think there's active assault. The active assault is actually over at Krasnohorivka. So uh, Russian forces continue to expand their control. Uh, they expanded uh, westward their control of the railway station region. And there is this uh, video footage of the turtle tank, uh, a new attempt by the Russian turtle tank to actually you know attack into the center of Krasnohorivka. They the tank did not really fire at anything. Uh it, it basically just drove all the way to the center of uh, Krasnohorivka, probably to try to draw fire from something, whatever. But uh all they gotten so uh in this video footage was just you know the Ukrainian artillery trying to hit the the turtle tank uh to no avail. The artillery is just too inaccurate to hit something moving. And uh it's a very very interesting footage. I published it in the uh, in the DPA archives. Uh, but yeah, the 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 furthest point it drove to was around here, super far away. Uh, we basically drove like a kilometer into into Ukrainian uh, controlled territory. So which means that uh, there is now Russian presence uh, in this area here. Russian forces can actually you know attack into these houses and create uh, another strong positions around here. Uh, so with because that it doesn't look like there is a lot of Ukrainian forces in this area here. The Ukrainian soldiers may be hiding in the houses, but uh, with Russian uh, having fire support and the Ukrainians do not have any anti-tank guided missiles to in engage all these tanks is pretty evident. Because uh, if they have, they would have taken out these tanks, not allowing them to you know do combat uh combat recon so far into uh, Ukrainian controlled territory. Uh, there is, uh, however. A Ukrainian tank destroyed uh, just at this position, and a Russian Russian uh, ha attack helicopters uh, attacking you no know, the the buildings, the industrial buildings around here. So again, the the appearance of Russian attack helicopters shows that the lack of surface to air missile system, and uh, the tank de being destroyed still shows that it, there is still Ukrainian presence, but Russian penetrating into this area here does show uh, the Ukrainians have very limited anti-tank guided missiles uh, 
to spare. Uh, Ukrainians could have had this position and fired at a tank when it was driving through the open uh, open ground, but no, that, that attack never came. Uh, the Ukrainians simply used artillery. So uh, situation must be pretty uh, bad for the Ukrainians in this ground, in the Krasnohorivka region. Um, this is very, very surprising for the Rus Russian tank to just drove uh, no unharassed uh, other than the artillery you know all the way to the center we will continue to monitor and see how this progress for the uh ukrainian side if we move into the fdfk front uh, at the fdfk uh, at front uh, russian forces continue their offensive with fighting reported towards novo novo kalinove towards ocheritini robo novo pamutivka and badaichi semenivka uh, netolove as well as in the south of uh, pomaiske Ukrainian forces counterattack at uh, Netolove, at Semenivka, Badaichi, towards Stepove, and uh, as well as uh, Novo Kalinove. So, this, this is the strategic situation uh, in the DFK front. Uh, Ukrainians seem to be trying a lot more uh, counter counter offensive operations particularly over in the Badaichi region with the Russians uh, Russian mapping uh, conceding. Uh, that the western part of Badaichi is now under Ukrainian control. Previously, they have claimed the Russians have taken it. So Ukrainian counter-offensive may have taken this ground, although in, according to the Ukrainian mapping, it had never been Russian. So the, and the Russian Defense Ministry reported attacking towards an, an attack towards a step away, which is kind of weird. Uh, so because the front line have not really evolved in that kind of direction, we will see. And uh, Ukraine still have a presence in the northern part of Semenivka. Russians are still trying to attack with Ukrainian counterattack being reported at Semenivka as well. So Ukrainians are trying to push back the Russians over in the Badaichi region. So that is very interesting. However, the same cannot be said over at Povomaisky. So in the Povomaisky region, Russian forces push south. Uh, from uh, from the northern part of Povomaisky and hit to this uh, valley or or valley region. Uh, I, I don't think the right the right word is valley. I think the, the, the there's another word for it called I forgot. So anyway, um, so the Russian forces are pushing south, and this may cause any Ukrainian forces if they are still holding this area here to be. Uh, potentially encircled. According to Russian mapping, Povomaiske is under Russian control, and uh, this would actually cause a pincer attack. Uh, in if the Russians decided to do it, if ne Nevelsky is indeed under Russian control, then the Ukrainian forces over here is going to be encircled. Uh, and so the Ukrainian forces must quickly redraw right now uh, from this uh salience, or they will be encircled. Uh, however, according to the Russian uh, report, they also say that uh, this this particular area between Nevelsky and Povomaisky is extremely difficult to quickly capture because there is a lot of mines uh, in this area here. So the Russian forces uh, to take this area here would have to be really careful, very slow. And uh, this doesn't help because Ukrainians launched a lot of drones in this area here. So... To, uh, clearing mines while the uh, enemy drones are hunting you is a bit uh, tricky to navigate but uh, regardless strategically speaking uh, it is no longer holdable for the Ukrainians around, along this area here Ukrainian forces will have to form a new line of defense uh, uh, on the western part of Nevelsky and Povomaisky uh, lining up all the way to Netolove in the northern part of this area here so we will continue to monitor and see how this uh, develops over in the Povomaisky region. And uh, over in the north, northernmost part, uh, the Russian Tang, you know, this looks like a Tang, is starting to leak uh, Echeritini. The Russian forces now are attacking towards Echeritini. This is yet the another day. So every 24 hours, there is a development uh, in this area here. We first have this one, and then there was moving towards Povomaisky, now uh, Novo Bakhmutivka, and now it's moving towards Ocheritini. So things are really looking really bad. The entire line of defense here has been broken. And uh, it's suffice to say that the Russians are now attacking towards Novo Bakhmutivka as well, other than the uh, having the first grounds of a charity name so if you look at the uh, the the ukrainian mapping uh they claim that the russians have taken the substation as well as a number of houses in the first 
the first few houses at Ocheritini. Uh, the Russian forces are going along this railway line. So the battle of Ocheritini has begun and this actually comes much earlier than I uh, expected. And as I mentioned before, uh, the Ukrainian uh, second line of defense actually is here. Uh, from this point all the way to Kalilivka and uh, so this is where the second line, the second prepared line of defense where the Ukrainians lost a lot of soldiers trying to build and the Russians may just go around it entirely. And this seems to be the case. And if the Russian forces are going to go around it, the entire defense line is going to collapse. And uh, if you look further up north, the Russian forces have bigger bigger uh, fish to fry. After a charity need, they can actually move towards a Porres, move to north towards Novo Alexandrivka, towards uh, Vodizhenka, as and then they can go to this major junction, highway junction between Melanivka and Brezivka. And uh, if the Russians manage to, over the course of maybe the next two months, traveling all the way there, they are going to cut off connections between uh, Pokrov and Konstantinivka, and this will create a massive logistic headache for the Ukrainian side. And uh, this will make this entire line look super stupid just like the entire the entire line over at New York front look super stupid and uh, and that would like you no know, make this entire area totally unnecessary so uh, Russian forces can just continue to move towards Pokrov and uh, make this and make the Ukrainian forces here really happy because they don't have to die so um that's all over at the DFK front uh, the, this is the importance of this push it towards Ocharitine going around the the defenses as you can see the 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 major def fortress is over at Sokil the Russian forces can simply just go around it so they don't have to take it they just don't have to take it but uh, knowing the Russians they will take it so you no know, Russians being Russians like just like how they are penetrating directly into Chasif here uh, right now so there's nothing at New York front so we are going to the Bakhmut front as we are going to talk about Chasif here soon uh, Russian forces continue the, in their southern flank in their attack towards uh, Klishevka and Dryevka as well as Kudyumivka uh, uh, there is your location of uh, Ukrainian forces a mortar system getting hit by Russian artillery within the uh, Klishevka as well uh, uh, within Klishevka itself uh, Ukrainian forces getting hit by FPV drones so Russian forces continue to you know, treat this as a kill box the, they are not pushing uh, they are just attacking you know, in a very positional sense uh, the, however in the northern flank is a bit different Russian forces are still trying to push through in this area here uh, if we zoom in uh, Russian forces are attacking in the area of Ivaniski. So uh, there is still no 100% confirmation of Russian full capture of Ivaniski. Uh, there is your location of uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, sapper units. Installation of any tank mines by sapper unit, they got hit. Uh, they got hit by the drone. So Ukrainian forces was uh were in installing some anti-tank mines at the at the entrance of uh Nove, and then they got killed uh, by by the drones. However, uh, based on Ukrainian uh, sources, Deep State UA reported that er that there is Russian forces being geolocated over here. Uh, which is very weird. How did the Russian forces reach this place where the Ukrainian forces are still trying to fortify Nove? So did the Russians go through this forest and then ended up appearing in this area here in the forest re region is really unclear which is why I did not draw uh, any uh, any front line to uh, denote captures or possible Russian presence because this geolocation seems very suspicious very weird very out of place so definitely we will definitely need more information before we can commit to any uh, mapping change uh, otherwise in Kalinina uh, a uh, Ukrainian tank got destroyed by anti-tank guided missile uh, so one destruction over here and then Chasivia itself got hit by uh, Russian artillery and uh, Russian airstrikes so situation uh, over in the Novo Nove region this Novi by the way uh, Novoye this Novi region and uh, Chasivia region continue to be uh, very uh, fluid uh, it's a bit unclear how these things is going to progress uh, particularly particularly with this you no know, very weird geolocation uh, published by the Ukrainian side uh, definitely uh, requires more study Russian forces are reportedly attacking Chastivia according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry so I suppose this is actually uh, from the forest region towards Chastivia so we'll wait we we'll just wait and see how this progress 
that's all for the uh, at the Africa front. We move into the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, Russian forces continue their Sivas offensive, fighting reporter at Bilohorivka, Khrykhorivka, Vukomokayamsky, as well as towards Vimka. So this is the current the strategic situation. Uh, it seems like an attack from multiple directions. So we will see how this goes. Uh, the one at Khrykhorivka most likely is coming. Uh, is talking about fighting within the Serebransky forestry, which we should now talk about uh, in the criminal front. So Russian forces are attacking in the Serebransky forestry. Most probably they are attacking towards Khrykhorivka as well, uh, because Khrykhorivka is actually being mentioned. Uh, and then uh, the, the Russians uh, re restarted their fighting towards Toske. Uh, the f last time it was mentioned, it was on the 15th, previously it was on the 12th. So, you know, this Toske at, uh, attack is starting to look a bit more serious. Uh, and then the clash at Terni continues. Uh, it, it starts to return again into a more regular basis. So, this is the criminal front uh, strategic situation. We move on. To, uh, there's nothing over at the Sviatovay front. Uh, the previous attack reported at Stemakivka was not being reported. And we move into the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, there is nothing being reported. Uh, surprisingly, su suddenly everything went quiet. Previously, we have a reported attack at Kutelerivka, uh, Zagoryokivka, as well as Sinkivka. Suddenly, it was totally not mentioned. So, could that be a massive diversionary attempt by the Russians? perhaps and uh, over the border regions uh, Russian forces continue to grind away at the Ukrainian defenses at Kharkiv front uh, with an airstrike reported on an MLRS and an uh, ammunition depot at Lipsy uh, over here and uh, over at Momotov uh, Momotov uh, there is an uh, infantry fighting vehicle getting hit by lancers so and the lancers actually is now flying you no know, 20, 30 kilometers into the Ukrainian territory in Kharkiv, which means that they are literally hunting for stuff to kill. Uh, for them to fly this far means that near the front line, there might be a lot lesser uh, Ukrainian heavy equipment. Uh, maybe they are hiding uh, within warehouses and whatnot. So the Russian uh, drones have to fly much further to hunt for targets. So it is going to be a very hard existence uh, for the Ukrainians around in the Kharkiv front with the R R Russians uh, having you know, all these drones hunting for equipment to destroy. Anyway, this is the strategy and tactical reporting. This is the SIP wrap for the day of 783 for the 16th of April. Do press the like button, subscribe. Uh, hopefully you prefer this more chill pacing. And I'll see you guys in the next update.